When we look at each cell in our body, we see that it's teeming with activity. There are things moving around from one place to another inside the cell at high speeds, just like things move around in a big city. And just like in a big city, th this movement is driven by uh, motors, in this case motor proteins. And these motor proteins allow cells to become very large and very complex and very specialized with different parts of the cell doing different jobs, just like in a city. And without these, the animals and the plants and the fungi would not have been able to evolve from the very simple small cells that existed before motor proteins evolved, that is the bacteria. So here at the University of Leeds and with our colleagues in Japan, we've been looking at one of these motor proteins, the biggest and the least well understood called dynein. So here we see individual dynein molecules fluorescently labeled so that we can observe their movement in the light microscope, moving along their tracks called microtubules. So what these movies show is where the molecules are, but we can't see the molecules themselves or how they're actually achieving this movement. We can just track their positions. A little bit like watching the headlights of vehicles from an aeroplane over a city. We can see where they are, but we don't know anything about what vehicle they might belong to. So in our study, we set dynein molecules running along their molecular tracks in the lab and then froze them in mid-stride by cooling them at a million degrees a second. Then using a cryo-electron microscope, we took thousands of images of the frozen motors in action. By combining many images, we were able to sharpen up the details of the molecule and build up a dynamic idea of its movement. This movie shows the dynein molecule bound to its molecular tract, the microtubule, which is shown at the top, by a long, thin structure called the stalk. So dynein drives itself along its track by alternately grabbing hold of binding sites, executing a power stroke, and then letting go, very much like a person swinging on monkey bars. One key discovery in our study was the existence of a very substantial hinge between the long, thin stalk of the dynein molecule and the grappling hook, like the wrist between a human arm and hand. This allows variation in the angle of attachment of the motor to its track and produces a great diversity of shapes of the molecule bound to its track. Images like these have allowed us to build a new computer model of how the dynein motor interacts with its molecular track. This movie shows the molecular track at the top and the motor connected to the track by its two long thin arms that connect to the ring-like engines and the two ring-like engines are themselves connected to one another by a flexible linkage. Between the stalk and the microtubule is the grappling hook and the grappling hook has a hinge shown by the red dot. An understanding of motor proteins is very important for medical research because, for example, many viruses hijack motor proteins to travel to the nucleus. But motor proteins are also involved in motor neuron disease and cancers of various sorts. And now that we have a better understanding of how the engine of these motor proteins works, the next big challenge in the field is to understand how cargos are loaded and unloaded from these motors and how this affects health and disease.